Yeah, it was. Um, I always say that too. You know, it's definitely applicable. Some of the things you can, um, you know, I'm not, I never sold drugs, but I know people who have, and a lot of the times they're brilliant people who are great businessmen. They got to just make the transition into a legitimate um, business. What, what are your thoughts on Jay Z? If you don't mind me asking, have you ever met Jay Z? Ever talked to him? No, I haven't. Okay. I mean, how how are your thoughts on all the rappers? I mean, uh, like for example, on Nipsey Hustle, we seen Nipsey. Stay in his community, give back to his community. Unfortunately, pass away in his community. Would seem like one of the most authentic people in hip hop. Somebody that people adored. But that's one of the that's one of the small percentage of people that's in the hip hop game. So, what do you think about hip hop in general? What did you think about Nip? Well, Nipsey was cool. Me and Nipsey, uh, we had we had quite a few conversations. We never had the opportunity to to work together. Uh, and I tried, you know, I tried to to break through to Nipsey. Uh, I believe that if I would have got to him, he, he would still be alive today. Yeah. You know, I could I could have showed him how to navigate through this thing because it definitely takes some navigation. It's not easy to uh, to get to be sixty years in 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 Los Angeles. Uh, but it was cool what he was trying to do. You know, I I I think he could have did a lot more than what he was doing had he had the 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 background and and the knowledge to to know. You know, I took one hundred and twenty five dollars and turned into three million dollars a day sometimes. So so I don't I don't play. Right. You know, when I got out of prison, I had two hundred dollars. I only been out of prison 11 years. And I, I bet you right now I probably touched. I probably touched about four million dollars, five million dollars already, even though I, I always put it back on the hook and throw it back in the water and try to catch something bigger. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but I have touched a lot of money since I've been home. Uh, you know, I self publish my books, um, and and it's just that a lot of people don't really understand how to uh, how to do that. What's your secrets, if you may? To your uh, What's your secrets to your success? Whatever you can give to us. Well, the, one of the main things is that you got to love people. You know, you got to make people first. Uh, so many times, you know, people make money first and and money is not. Uh, I mean, you know, they can just wrap up that machine and wash it and just print that shit out. You know, money ain't nothing but paper. You know, Donald Trump put his name on it. Like, like y'all can't even put it out without putting my name on it. So uh, 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 that paper don't really mean nothing. It, it's 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 the people that really count. You know, without the people, you don't have nothing. Now, now, did it make you look at people differently, being as though you, you know, was a drug dealer? Did it like, did it make you look at people in a different light, at all? No, no. I've always looked at people the same way. I've always loved people. I loved my even the people when they smoked crack. To me, mm-hmm. it was no different than nobody else. They just had. Uh, uh, at first, it was uh, the the ability. First, when when I first started selling crack, I looked up to people that was able to smoke crack. Because you had to be on a certain level to be able to smoke crack. Because most people didn't have three or four hundred dollars that they could take and, and, and burn it in five minutes, and, and it'd be gone. So when I used to see people do that, I'd be like, "Damn, he can burn three, four hundred dollars like that? He a bad mother? Shut mm-hmm. your mouth!" Uh-huh. <laughs> the deterioration of people, though, like you see people like they may have been working. You know what I mean? And, and healthy and all of a sudden, you know, they come back skinny, missing teeth. Did that make you feel a certain way? Uh, well, crack, crack dealers didn't really lose teeth. <laughs> you talking about crystal meth. <laughs> <laughs> well, just the deterioration, though. I mean, you know, people come yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. I, see, I see people where they miss a meal. Well, I, I would miss a meal. You know, I would go two or three days sometime without eating, you know, so I could stand on the street and sell crack all day. So, so that didn't really, uh, really phase me until later on in the game, to where I started seeing people quit their job, talking about they was gonna do what I was doing. Oh no, Rick, I ain't going to work no more. I'm gonna stand out here and do like you and sell crack all day. <laughs> but what they didn't understand is that I didn't smoke crack. So every mm-hmm. time I made twenty dollars, mine went into a shoebox, mm-hmm. not to come out anymore, unless it was gonna turn into thirty dollars. If I took twenty out my shoebox. When it went back, it was going to be 30 bucks. It wasn't going to come back uh, five bucks, you know. So so often what we do is is when we get some money, we take it and we go buy some Air Jordans. Uh, and as soon as we walk out the store, they lost their value. That's 
Ah, you still there? Are oh, you still there? Good, good. I think so. You can still hear? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can you hear me? I yeah. hear you. I hear you. Yeah. So, uh, 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 you know, I just don't buy things like that. You know, I don't need I don't need Air Jordans to make me special. You know, I don't need I don't need nobody else's name to make me special. You know, it's like I would never name myself Jay Z or 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 nothing. You know, my mama gave me that name. I'm gonna make that name. I'm gonna make that name work. You know, because she gave me that name, and my mama was special, and my daddy was special. So they gave me that name, and I'm gonna stick with it. I don't need to put Adidas on my hip to make me special. I don't need a uh, 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 polo, holo, or whatever they call them. Mm. I don't need none of them people. None of the names that that you can't pronounce. Gucci or Lucci, and 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 I don't need that shit to make me special. I'm already special. I was born special. You one of the rare ones though, because you see a lot of the kingpins out there. They flashy, they this, they that. Were you always under that persona, like never to flash, always save, always going to that quote unquote Jewish kind of style mentality of always holding your money and stacking it mentality? Uh, pretty much, you know. When 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 I we came up poor, you know, when I was when I was young, I just had to put tennis balls on the bottom of my shoe to keep uh, uh, keep my feet off the concrete. Mm. So uh, uh, I, I respect uh, the little things, you know, that, that so many other people uh, don't get to respect. And um, I just never needed that, that, that flash. You know, when I sold drugs, I didn't want to be flashy because I didn't want people to, to recognize me. I didn't want to be known as the, as the big kingpin, you know. Uh, um, I just wanted to be normal, but with the money to where if we wanted to eat, we could eat. Where no marshals would be coming to our door talking about you guys got to move, or or my mom talking about the lights got cut off or the gas got cut off. You know, I went to the refrigerator and it was nothing in there. You know, I've been through that. Right. Got one, one more question I want to ask you. Um, this regard to a, um a case that we attended, it was pretty much a guy. He was um a rapper. Him and his organization they were selling drugs and whatnot. And what struck me about this is that. They they trace his source all the way back to California, but they never. Indicted. Yeah, I hear you. All right, I just got a few more questions, man. We'll get you out of here. Um, appreciate you taking this hour with us today. Absolutely. I, 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 they, I, I, they ain't used to me not answering my phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they keep calling. Um, I don't know how much you heard, but I was talking about a rapper based out of Philadelphia. He went to his federal trial, and um, he was pretty much selling crack and stuff in the community. And they trace his his source back to uh, California, but I was wondering, I was thinking, like, how can you? They made him the kingpin, but wouldn't his source be the kingpin? My question is to you: Would it would it be safe to say that behind every major dope boy or kingpin, the supply is pretty much the government supply that somebody uh, eventually getting it from? I don't know. I couldn't say that uh, 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 for a fact. Um, my my supplier was a government uh, uh, CIA yeah. operatives, but I couldn't say that about nobody else's supplier because I wouldn't know the the circumstances. Damn, it's crazy. I got one more question for you too, very quick. When you did twenty years behind bars or approximately twenty years behind bars, they wanted you to do life. They wanted you to serve the rest of your life behind bars. Do you think that there's a vendetta out on you, especially when you go into some of these court cases, like some of the lawsuits you lost and things? You think that they look at that and go, nah? will always stick it to that man because of this, how he got out and stick it to us. I don't think that they really look at it that I beat my case, but you know, they definitely look at that. I'm a, I'm a ex drug kingpin and that definitely plays uh, on the judges, uh, a uh, mental. So, um, did I beat them? You know, I, I had 35 cops indicted. <clears throat> you know, that was a group of cops that called themselves. They named themselves after me. And they were going around robbing and 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 torturing uh, uh, black people here in L.A. Uh, and taking their money. And and uh, I hired an investigator and and, and got him indicted. Uh, but even that, I don't think they hold that against me. You know, uh, a lot of people think that that was that was good. That you know that the cops that were selling drugs and stealing money and stealing drugs uh, should not be on the force. But at the end of the day, you know, when you put that drug kingpin title on somebody, uh, <clears throat> I mean, you know, most people don't even want the, the, the box, you know, to saying that, that they've been to prison. So, yeah. 
not only that, but you put that drug kingpin on the, on the front. But and then and then too, you know, I find that it's a double standard as well, because uh, uh, a lot of the people that I meet in Hollywood, uh, they use drugs and snort it and, and, and tried to sell it and all that, you know. Mm. But but uh, you know, in, in Beverly Hills, the cops don't raid houses in Beverly Hills, and they don't raid offices in Beverly Hills. So uh, a lot of these guys got away and and and, and made it, uh, you know, to the next level. 